Want a ride, sister? No, thanks. I'm just walking home from one. You better hop in. It's three miles back to town. Are you telling me? Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Do you want to do me a favor? Sure. Well, a couple of miles down the road, you'll find a sport roadster with a bum sport in it. Give him his keys and tell him that Cassie said she got home okay. No thanks to him. Good night. Good night. Yes, Mom. Did you have a good time, dear? Terrible, thanks. I've been walking for an hour. You tired, dear? Am I tired? Ooh. What'd you do today, Mom? Nothing much. Mrs. Kane came in. No, what did she have to say? She had a new dress on. It was beautiful. Gladys sent it from New York. Hmm. Gee, at this rate, these shoes aren't going to last much longer. I can almost put my finger through it now. Gladys must be making a lot of money now. Last week, she sent her mother a set of silver, didn't she? Her mother says she's earning $200 a week now. A week? That's what she says. Makes my 15 a week look kind of silly. There's nothing silly about that. No? No. Well... Maybe if I'm careful, I can save up enough to buy your Rolls Royce next year. You needn't make fun of your job. Fifteen dollars is a good salary nowadays. Yeah. Swell. Gee, Mom, I wish there was something else I could do beside jerk sodas for a living. Maybe I could get you some of the things that Gladys got. Cassie Bond, stop talking like that. I'm perfectly happy. Now, come on, get into bed. There's nothing I want. We're doing all right, aren't we? We've got a nice home oh, and... Uh, yeah, I... I guess so. Good night, Cassie, dear. Good night, Mom. Here's your lover's delight, Mrs. Scudder. Say, Cassie, you going to dance tomorrow night? Not that I know of. Jimmy told me he's taking you. That's the first I'd heard of it. Oh, you. Can't you take a joke? Don't <laughs> <laughs> tell me you aren't joking, boy. Yeah. Oh, no. Cassie, did you see it? See what? It's a Skane's new car. Gladys bought it for us. I just drove up in it. Look, there it is out there. Come on, fellas, let's take a look at it. Gee, it's a fizz, isn't it? Don't put that hands on that boy. Please get that off the closet, please. Isn't it new, Ford? Yes. Oh, I'm going to get one like that, and I get a closet. Maybe I'll get a roadster, though. Isn't it lovely, Nellie? Beautiful. It's one of them new models, Ada. Yes, it is. What's up, Cassie? You better get yourself another soda jerker, Lynn. Wait, what do you mean? 
I'm going to New York. Good morning, Miss Barnes. Good morning. What do you have? Bromo salsa. Double dose. Okay. Well, it's still fizzing. Huh? Huh? What's fizzing? Well, what do you mean? Oh, go away. Uh, I hate blondes. Well, I hate drunks, so that makes us even. Take your hands off me, you big stiff. You oh, little... don't say it. I'm quitting. You bet your life you're quitting. Go on, get out of here. Not so fast. I've got two days' pay coming. Yeah, try and get it. What do you mean, try and get it? Get out. Make it snap. Take your hands off of me. Come on, get out of here. Will you do it. Let's Will go. You get out of here, pie face. I think you'll sleep much better tonight if you pay the girl. Or maybe you'll prefer a nice, gentle sock in the nose. Well, would you? I was gonna pay her, I was only kidding. Oh, sure you would. Sure. Well, go on, go on, pay her. He was only kidding. Yeah. Here. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, listen, just a minute. Could I drive you home? I've got my car here. Listen, Miss, I thanked you, didn't I? Oh, yes, but I thought riding the park would calm your nerves. Well, there's nothing wrong with my nerves. No? No. Oh. Well, maybe you'd come with me. I need the air. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm giving you the air. Oh. Oh, well, listen, you don't understand. What have you got against the world? Seems to be treating you all right. I'm fed up, that's all fed up with formal dinners, pompous butlers, and, and... And blondes. Yes. Say, was it a blonde that drove you to drink? Oh, no. I don't need anybody to drive me to drink. I can do that myself. <laughs> Certainly must have been a wild party last night. Oh, I don't know. I didn't stay there long. I ducked and spent the night in the speakeasy. I had to get away from those cackling women. Oh, excuse me. I beg your pardon. Well, don't tell me they were all blondes. Did I say I hated blondes? Mm -hmm. Well, I was wrong, because I hate brunettes, too. Yes, and redheads. What have the poor things done to you? They made me lose my faith in them. Aren't you sorry for me? Oh, terribly. Do you know what I'm going to do the rest of my life? Excuse me. No. I'm going to spend the time looking for an honest woman. Do you think I'll ever find one? No, never. You're right. There ain't no such animal. Is this the house? Yeah. Well, they all look alike to me. 
Well, you can't miss mine. My landlady's always on guard. There she is now. Say, what's she sore about? Nothing. That's just her natural look. Oh. Oh. Well, goodbye, Miss, um... Barnes. Oh, Barnes, yes. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Sloan. The next time I get drunk, I'll I'll look you up. <laughs> All right. Well, you needn't bother. <clears throat> and boom, right back at you. Hello, Doc. Hello. Well, what are you doing home? Job number three is now a thing of the past. Yeah? What happened? Oh, the manager had a lot of brand new ideas. He tried to take my waist measurement. Oh, I know. Wanted to see if you're gaining any weight, huh? Yeah. Then when the smoke of the battle had cleared away, he was on the floor and little Cassie was on her way out. Ah, virtue triumphs again. Yeah, but no job. Well, you can't have both. I found that out a long time ago. That's why I'm working at home. <laughs> Say, Cass, do you know addressing envelopes ain't as tough as it's cracked up to be? No, no. There's a lot of money in it. I doped the whole thing out a little while ago. At a dollar and a half a thousand, if I sent an envelope to everybody in the United States, I'd make $150,000. That's swell. Have you figured out how long it's going to take you to do that? Oh, um, about 250 years. I had no idea there was such a future in it. Oh, yes. Oh, gee, I get tired doing this. Callahan, Colby, Cohen, Culpepper. Where do people get all those silly names? Gee, this wouldn't be a bad job if everybody's name was Smith. Say, Cass... You don't happen to know of a good man laying around loose, do you? A plumber or something? I grabbed the first one that came along so I wouldn't have to type these silly, stupid things. Oh, you're always yelping about men, Dot. Yeah, well, that's my trouble. All I do is yelp, but I never can get my clutches on one. Oh, they give me a pain. Oh, I met a new breed this morning. Yeah? What's he like? Rich, handsome, and a sap. He was in the store when I had the scrap this morning. Brought me home in his car. What happened? Did he make a pass at you? No, he didn't even try to date me up. The conceited fool. Well, what are you kicking about? Isn't that what you want? Yeah, but a man doesn't have to be insulting, does he? He dumped me out of the car as if I was... Well, as if I... Uh, if it's a man, I'm home. Yeah? Speaking. Why, Gladys, I've been... Yeah, I know. When'd you get back, Gladys? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it, Gladys. When? All right, I'll be right down. <laughs> Goodbye, Gladys. Don't tell me that was Gladys. Yes, how did you know? Oh, I just guessed it. She just got back in town this morning. She wants me to come right down and have lunch with her. Now, ain't that just grand? Boy, will I be glad to see her. I haven't seen her for three years. Well, goodbye, slave. I'm going to have my lunch in style. Yeah, and I hope you choke. Oui, madame. I'd like to see Miss Gladys Kane, please. Oui, madame. Annette? Oui, madame. Emmenez, madame, voir mademoiselle Kane. Oui. This way, madame. Someone for you, Gladys. Cassie. Hello, Gladys. Gee, it's good to see you. Come on over, sit down. 
Why didn't you tell me you were coming to New York? Well, I left kind of sudden. See, you haven't changed a bit, hon. How's your mother? Oh, Mom's swell. Say, I saw your mother before I left. She's so uh-huh. happy. See, you've been so good to her, sending her all those lovely things. Oh, it's nothing. I wish I could do much more. She deserves it, poor dear. Struggled all her life. Always had to scrimp and save. Yeah, but you're lucky to be able to help her. Gee, this must be a swell job. Oh, so-so. It only pays $60 a week, but it's better than nothing. What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I've had three jobs already. Oh, I wish I could work in a place like this. You do? Oh, I think it would be grand. Say, do you think that I... No, you wouldn't make a bad model. Stand up a minute. Say, turn around. Not bad. Gladys, quick, quick, Gladys. Put on that new negligee, the velvet one with the beads. A customer, she want to see it. Oh, Andre, wait a minute. This is Miss Barnes, a friend of mine. She ought to make a great model. Why? For why she ought to make a great model, huh? Well, look at it. I am looking. I see nothing. Didn't you say you wanted a platinum blonde? Oh, the hair, that is a poof. Nothing, huh? For that I can buy a wig. Let me see the figure. Figure? Yes, yes, figure. You know what it is. Oh, figure. Oh, yes. Mm. Look, Andre. Mm. You can walk, huh? Well, sure, I can walk. Do I look like a cripple? Perhaps. He means, can you walk like a model? Oh. Oh, come, come, quick, walk, walk. I have customer waiting. Mon Dieu, mon Dieu, for that you waste my time, huh? This is not the burlesque show. Ah, she's impossible. Gee, Gladys, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, kid. Don't let her throw you. I have to get ready. Will we get me that negligee, Mamie? All right. Hurry, girls. They're waiting for you. All right, I'm ready. Wait a minute. You're going to get into that negligee. Me? Yes, you. I'm going to show him there's one Frenchman that can be wrong. Come on, take your dress off. Oh, you better be careful, Gladys. He might get sore and fire you. Okay, I'll either lose my job or get you one. Oh, I know, but... Now, don't argue with me. We haven't much time. You get it off. And listen, when you walk, forget you have hips. Let them take care of themselves. They always do. Look, here's the idea. And a little smile. Well, what do you call those? What? These. <laughs> do you wear them all the time? Sure. They're nice and warm. Yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. But you can't model in those. No? No. And even if you don't get this job, it might be best to get yourself some decent things like these. Well, why should I? I think it's a waste of money. Nobody ever sees them. Well, when I get married, maybe I'll get some of those silk girls. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, when you get married, you'd better get yourself some silk, girl. Uh, if a man ever took a look at yours, he'd faint from fright. Here, help me get this onto her. But Gladys, what are you going to do? Oh, that's all right. I'll take the blame. Here, take that. Oh, my, this is beautiful. Turn around. Oh, gee, Cassie, you look swell. Do you really think so? Uh-huh. Gladys. Oh, golly, here he comes. Now, remember your hips. Gladys, where are you? You are not dressed yet? Where is the negligee? Walk, Cassie. Walk. Hips. Beautiful. Ah, ma chère, quelle révélation, vous êtes adorable. Quel changement, c'est incroyable. Je suis enchanté. Je suis ravi de vous avoir ici dans mon établissement. Hmm? I think he says you're okay. Is that it, André? Okay. Elle est magnifique. Elle est adorable. Jamais je n'aurais... I 
I can't get over it. An apartment like this and all those clothes. How do you do it? After you've been in New York a while, you can make a dollar go a long way. I guess so. I haven't been here long enough to learn the trick yet. No, you haven't learned the trick yet. When am I going to meet the boyfriend? Oh, stick around. He ought to be here any minute now. Really? Uh-huh. He certainly looks important. He is. A banker. Banker? Uh-huh. Why well, I thought all bankers were grouchy old men with long gray beards. <laughs> oh, Arthur's nothing like that. You're crazy about him, aren't you? Gaga. And it's no good. If I ever thought I'd love him so violently, I'd have dropped him the minute I felt it coming on. Take my advice, Cassie. Never fall in love. It's terrible. But that's silly. If a man loves you and... Even if he does, you suffer too much. You worry about him. You don't sleep nights. When you're with him, you're like a frightened cat. You're afraid of saying the wrong thing. You're afraid to displease him. You wonder if he's happy, if he loves you, if there's another woman, if... Oh, it's terrible. But it's beautiful. Gee, you had me scared for a minute. I'm a sensible girl, Cassie. But where Arthur Phelps is concerned, I stopped thinking. He's married, you know. Married? Yes. And his wife won't give him a divorce. She knows about me. Well, what are you going to do, dear? Do? What can I do? I could leave him, I suppose. Why, yes. <laughs> Sounds easy, doesn't it? I'd just as soon be dead. I'm sorry. I had no idea things were like that. Do you suppose if you went to his wife... I went to his wife. I begged her to give him up. She threw me out. Gee... Yeah, that's what love's done for me, Cassie. I can't give him up, and I can't have him. I'm... Well, I'm just up the creek without a paddle. Well, there he is now. Oh, hello, darling. Hello. Well, what have we here? Oh, Cassie. Cassie, I want you to know Arthur Phelps. This is Cassie Barnes, the girl I was telling you about. How do you do? How do you do? Gladys tells me you're from her hometown. Yes. I'm bitterly disappointed. Why? Well, she doesn't look like a small-town girl to me. Oh, for heaven's sake, darling, what do you think a small-town girl looks like? Well, I expected her to be dressed in gingham. And a sunbonnet and a milk pail. Maybe leading a cow. Oh, you <laughs> fool. She looks as if she stepped out of a Follies chorus. <laughs> Say, if you're a sample of a, of a small town girl, I think I'd better be planning a cross-country tour. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, Cassie. Oh, what time are we expected to dinner? Oh, about 7.30. I'd better get ready. Pardon me a minute. Why can't we have Miss Barnes come along? Why not? How about it, Cassie? Oh, no, thank you. I don't think I'd better. Oh, come on. It's just going to be a little party. Just a few of my friends. Why, I don't like to butt in. Oh, don't be silly. We're only going to have dinner at the St. Regis Roof, and we'll probably come back here later. Oh, sure, she'll go. I'll be with you in a minute. I feel sort of guilty butting in like this. Well, that's absurd. We didn't want you. He wouldn't have asked you. Thanks. As a matter of fact, I should have been terribly disappointed if he weren't coming. I really wasn't looking forward to this evening with any great joy. That is, not until a few moments ago. listening to on the radio tonight. 
Captain Gladys told me about you. I had no idea you were so attractive. You know, you're beautiful. I'm just about ready now. Well, what do you think of him? Isn't he grand? What's the matter? No like? Why, yes, I, I think he's swell. Now you can understand why I'm so crazy about him. Oh, sure. That's easy to see. There we are. All set. Gladys. Huh? You won't mind if I don't go, will you? Why? What's the matter? Well, I... I've got an awful headache. Oh, that's awful, hon. I'm awfully sorry. Of course not. If you don't feel like it, you don't have to go. We'll ask you some other time. Thanks. Come on, we'll drive you home. Oh, please don't bother. I'll take the subway. It's a lot quicker. All right. Cassie isn't going with us. She has a headache. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll be running along now. Oh, goodbye, Miss Barnes. I'm very pleased to have met you. Thank you. I'm sorry, hon. Take an aspirin or something when you get home. You'll feel better in the morning. Oh, I'll be all right. Goodbye, Gladys. See you tomorrow, hon. Bye. Isn't she a sweet kid? Yes, very. You know... <laughs> I think she still believes in Santa Claus. <laughs> I do. Are you ready? Yes. Well, you're just in time. I was going to throw this stuff out, but you might as well eat it. There's one of the finest little weenies that ever graced a paper plate. It's a little shriveled from old age. But of course, you can't have everything. And the bologna, well, it's just bologna. And the milk, it, it's slightly curdled, but uh, you won't mind it. Just close your eyes and make believe it's buttermilk. <sighs> There's a feast for a queen. Heave to it, gal. Heave to it. Oh, I'm not hungry. Don't tell me you had dinner at one of those horrible places like the Ritz. I'm just not interested in food, Dot. Oh, all right. Maybe you'll be interested in the visitor you had. Visitor? Yeah. That guy that hates blondes was here again. Gee, he's getting to be an awful pest. What did he want? Wanted you to go out tonight. Well, he can go fly a kite. Oh, I, I don't think he's got a kite. Oh, but he's got the most beautiful car. I got a flash of it out the window. And it was driven by the most handsome chauffeur. Yeah, well, I wish he'd stop annoying me. Oh, Cassie, he's the grandest looking thing. I gotta hand him that. He's not bad looking. Well, when I saw him, my heart started to act up something awful. You know, if I was him, I'd never get out of that uniform. Say, who are you talking about? The chauffeur. Who do you suppose? Oh. He's coming back tomorrow night. Who? The chauffeur? No, Wilson. And he wants you to be all ready because you're going to his apartment tomorrow night for dinner. Oh, is that so? I'm going to have dinner in his apartment tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Say, what does he think? All he has to do is leave a message and I'm going to come running. Well, when he comes tomorrow night, you tell him I don't want anything to do with him. I don't want his dinner, and I'm not going to his apartment. Cordial? No, thank you. What a funny girl you are. No cocktails, no wine, no cordial. Don't you ever drink? Oh, yes, I had a drink once. My father had to pump it out of me. <laughs> you know, you're quite a novelty. Most of the girls around here seem to spend their time competing to see who can get blotto first. 
Oh, they're no different back home. That doesn't concern me. Ah, a woman with a strong will. Mm -mm. Just a weak stomach. <laughs> well, you know, I like to get tight once in a while. Why? Oh, it takes me to strange places and where I meet strange people. Like you, for instance. Is that supposed to be a compliment? I should say so. Thanks. In the second place, drink loosens my tongue, and I like that, too. It gives me a chance to declare myself about women. Well, you better not drink anymore. You might get started. Oh, don't worry. I'm not in that mood tonight. Well, what shall we do? When? No. I mean, do you want to go out somewhere, or prefer to sit around here and talk? Sit around here and talk? Mm-hmm. Can that be done? Why not? Oh, I don't know. I always thought a girl was never safe alone with a man, especially in his own apartment. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for the attack. Oh, <laughs> oh that's good. <laughs> well, you can relax. You see, I never do any attacking on Thursdays. Gee, that's a relief. <laughs> But I warn you, watch out for me on my yacht. The sea air makes me ferocious. Well, in that case, then, I won't ever go out on your yacht. <laughs> if it weren't Thursday, I wouldn't be here. Oh, I wish you'd never come into my life. Why, Jerry? Well, you're having a bad influence on me. Look, you've even got me drinking lemonades now. Oh, you poor boy. Mm, I don't like it, lady. Well, why not? It's a bad sign. When a woman starts reforming me, it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> you know something, darling? What? You're the most beautiful girl here. Thank you, sir. When I start to think about it, you're not so hard to look at yourself. Hmm. I'm glad we got that settled. <laughs> you silly. <laughs> Ouch. Come on, Ruth, don't be stubborn. No, sir. Either I approve of this plan or you don't get your divorce. But you don't think I'm going to bring her around here for inspection, do you? I most certainly do. Mm. I took the guys over to your place, didn't I? You took one look said thumbs down and I broke my engagement. We were crazy when we made that arrangement. We should have been divorced a long time ago. Don't be silly. It's been swell protection for me. Whatever a man proposes to me, I say, I'm sorry, but you'll have to get the approval of my husband. And he runs like, ow! That's schoolboy stuff. Well, you seem to forget that it was your own idea. I wanted a divorce. And you said, no, let's stay married. Then we won't make any more mistakes. Well, I'm going to keep you from making a fool of yourself if it's the last thing in the world I do. Hmm. They tell me she looks pretty hectic. What is she? A chorus girl? No, she's not a chorus girl. No, a dancer? And she isn't a dancer. If you want to know, she's a model at Andre's. A model and at Andre's? My dear, you are coming up in the world. Oh, stop trying to be smart, Ruth. Do I get my divorce? Emphatically, no. Same old Ruth. You haven't changed a bit. You're as stubborn as a as a mule is the word, my dear. No. You don't think I'm going to let you fall into the clutches of some Oh, you make me tired. He's been marvelous. Coming here today to take me to lunch. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Gee, I'm mad about him, Gladys. You know, it's funny how your ideas change. I used to dream about getting somewhere in life. But all of a sudden, nothing means anything, except Jerry. Yeah, I know. But in the meantime, don't forget you're working for a living. Better snap into it. Customers are waiting. Right you are, gal. Looks like a pretty good egg. 
Voilà, madame, la blonde. She is that one. Why, Jerry? Bonjour, Monsieur Wilson. Oh, Andre. What are you doing here? Oh, just looking around. It's pretty obvious to me. Keep your mind on the race, sister. Oh, what a stunning gown. Is it not beautiful, madame? The model? <laughs> no, 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 madame. The gown. Such color, such line. It is exquisite. How do you like it, Jerry? Turn around again, please. I want my husband to see it. Jerry, won't you please pay attention? You're not looking at the gown. You will take it, madame. I don't know, Andre. I want to look it over very carefully. Oui, madame. Uh, walk a little, please, Miss Cassie. I'll talk it over with my husband and let you know. It may be too expensive for him. Oui, madame. That is all, Miss Cassie. Merci. What happened, kid? He's married. Naturally. They're always married. When they're rich and handsome and you're in love with them, they're married. But he didn't tell me. Of course he didn't tell you. Why should he? They never do until you're so far gone you're tied up in a knot. Oh, what am I going to do, Gladys? Do? Nothing. Chalk it up to experience. Forget that he ever existed. You never met him, see? It was a bad dream. I can't give him up. Oh, I love him too much. But you've got to. Listen, kid. Did you ever hear of a game of pool that has to do with the eight ball? Well, the idea of the game is not to hit that particular ball, see? If you do, you lose. But if you land right behind it, you can't help yourself, can you? You've got to hit it. Well, that's the way it is when you get mixed up with a married man. You're always behind the eight ball. You always lose. Look at me. I was getting along swell. I thought the world looked pretty rosy. Then I met Arthur Phelps, a married man, and fell in love with him. Where's it going to get me? I'll tell you where. The same place you're going to wind up if you don't give this bird the air. Behind the eight ball. I know, but maybe Jerry can explain. Well, of course he can explain. They can always explain. And I'll tell you what his story's going to be, too. He'll tell you that his wife won't give him a divorce, and that if she would, he'd marry you in a minute, in the meantime, there's no reason why you shouldn't see each other. Monsieur Wilson to see you, Miss Baum. What'll I do, Gladys? Nothing. Let me take care of it. You'll be careful what you say to him, please. Sure, I'll be careful. Mr. Wilson, there's no use you hanging around here any longer. Cassie just found out you're married. She's through with you. Oh, but wait a minute. I want... She said you can go peddle your papers somewhere else. Oh, what do you care if he's married? Suppose he is. Well, not, but he's rich, ain't he? But, Dad, I don't want his money. Well, I wish I was in your place. Believe me, I'd let a man write his own ticket. I bet that's that landlady again, the old horse face. She's been complaining about the garbage all day. Good evening. Could I see you, Miss? Gee, she was certainly glad to see you, wasn't she? Yes, looks like it, doesn't it? Will you come in? No, I don't think I'd better. Thanks. Hey, listen, I pay half the rent here. Come on in, sit on my half the couch. All right. Thanks. I couldn't get her to talk to me this morning. So I thought I'd drop up here. Yeah. 
This looks like a bus too, doesn't it? Sure does. I could talk to her alone in a few minutes. Say, would you, would you do a fellow a favor? Yeah, I know. Scramanola, huh? Uh-huh. I get you. And what am I to do? Walk the streets until a great American tragedy is fixed here? Well, I've got my car downstairs and my chauffeur can take you for a Your ride. Your chauffeur? Yes, he could take you for a ride in the park. Would you like that? Would I like that? Oh, boy. Say, mister, I'm not much for automobiles, but to do you a favor, I... That's the way I feel about it. You can tell Cassie I think she's acting like a fool. Good night. Cassie, you'll have to listen to me. Through the park, big boy. Yes, ma'am. At first, I didn't tell you I was married because be honest, I wasn't interested enough. And then when I discovered how much I did care, I was afraid to frighten you away. I thought if I talked it over with my wife first, she oh, might... Oh, yes, I know, I know. But she won't give me a divorce. Huh. Oh, please, Cassie. Try and understand my position. If it weren't for that, I, I'd ask you to marry me right away. Oh, don't make me laugh, Jerry. No, I'm on the level, darling. And I haven't given up yet. Ruth's a good scout. I think she'll give me a divorce if I keep after her. In fact, I know she will. But in the meantime... Oh, sure. In the meantime, there's no reason why we shouldn't go on seeing one another. Isn't that it? Well, yes. Of course. And I know what comes after that, too. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but I'm not interested. Oh, please, darling. You don't understand. Come in. It's after nine o'clock, Miss Barnes. Do you know what the rules are? By the way, what's your name? Jimmy Gallahan. What's yours? Todd O'Brien. Irish? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> your girlfriend. Yeah, she up chucked a good job. Yeah, what is this I hear about you quitting? I'm going back home. What's the idea? I'm tired of New York. Oh, hooey. That's not the reason, and you know it. Yes, it is, honest. I know what's the matter with you. You're afraid of Jerry. You're afraid you'll weaken. You don't want to hang around where he can run into you. That's it, isn't it? No, what, what makes you think that? Well, I'm not going to let you go, see? Running away isn't going to do you a bit of good. Oh, don't be a coward, Cassie. Stay here and face it. I can't, Gladys. Oh, I see. You'd rather go back home, eh? And admit you're a failure in New York. I don't care. Oh, think what you're doing for your mother, hon. You don't want to go back to soda jerking at 15 per again, do you? No. Well, then stop being so silly. If you don't want this guy Jerry pestering you, okay. Look, I'll tell you what to do. I'm going to Atlantic City for a week. 
You move into my apartment. Stay there till I get back. It'll give you time to think things over. What do you say, huh? I don't think I'd better. Oh, go on, Cassie. Be sensible. No, sir -ree. Not in a thousand years. Mm -mm. I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. I'm not supposed to tell anybody, especially you. But don't you see? This is important. I want to let her know that I'm getting my divorce. Oh, yeah? Yes. Now will you tell me? Oh, now, Mr. Wilson, don't coax me. I made a promise, and I don't think you have any right coming here and trying to make me break it. When I tell her, I'm not going to tell anything, and... and uh... If I knew where Cassie was, I wouldn't need my car tonight. No? No. Well, um, if, um, uh, I... I wonder if... What's wrong, you baby? Oh, I, I got something on my mind. I ought to phone Cassie. Say, listen, before we get out into the wide open spaces, would you stop at a phone, sugar? Sure, baby. Hello. Who? I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but I have another engagement this evening. Oh, what? Uh, yes, Plaza 3232. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello, Dot. Say, listen, I told Wilson where you were. But I asked you not to tell him. I know, but his wife agreed to give him a divorce, and I thought... Oh, gosh. And I hung up on him. He... he is? Oh, that's swell. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Thanks. <laughs> Say, what's the idea? Gladys told me she lets you have the apartment. Great little fixer, Gladys. You get out of here. Now, don't be mean. Oh, take your hands off of me. Now, that's not a nice way to act. Did you hear me say get out? Well, go on. But...
Oh. Uh, is Miss Barnes here? What makes you think you'd find her here? Well, I was told... Well, she's not here. That's funny. Her friend Dot told I me. don't care what anyone told you. I'm telling you she's not here. Well, there's no need to get so excited about it. I was misinformed, that's all. Sorry. Say, isn't this Miss Kane's apartment? This is my apartment. Oh, sorry, old man. Jerry! Oh, Jerry, please! What did you mean by telling him I wasn't here? Well, I thought that... Get out of here! Why, you... Go little... on and get out of here! Now listen. Get out! I want to explain, Jerry. You don't have to explain anything to me. But I want to. I want you to know what happened. I didn't invite him there. I didn't even know he was coming. I suppose that's why you had the door locked. I didn't lock that door. Mm, it looks fishy. He said you weren't there. I guess it's useless. You'll never understand. Oh, I understand. I understand, all right, that I was a fool to think I'd finally met a woman who'd be on the level. Oh, Jerry. Oh, you women are all alike. There isn't an ounce of loyalty in any of you. And you. The way you behaved when you discovered I was married. <laughs> you make me laugh. And all the time I was begging my wife to give me a divorce, you were carrying on a cheap... Oh, don't say it, Jerry, please. It's obvious to me now the kind of life you wanted. Why didn't you say so in the beginning? I'd have been glad to furnish it. Thanks. I'm quite sure you'd be very generous. But I'm not interested in your proposition. Up until this moment, you were the only man I had met who hadn't offered me one. Well, my record's complete now. That's swell. You've said some pretty rotten things, Jerry. Believe me, they've hurt. I hope someday you realize how wrong you are. I'm not going to try and convince you, not now. I could, I suppose, if I brought Gladys here. She could tell you the man you saw in the apartment is the man she's in love with. But I'd have to tell her what a rat he is, how he's tried to make love to me every time he saw me. Well, I'm not going to do it. She'd die if she ever found that out. As far as I'm concerned, you can think anything you want to about me because I don't ever expect to see you again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. And thanks for the buggy ride. Well, suffering whiskers. Yeah, it's right. My old eyes are not deceiving. Say, get this for a name. Luckenbacker. Aloysius Luckenbacker. That's why they take advantage of you, hand your names like that. I have to write four John Smith. A-L-O-Y to every one of these S-I-U-S. L-U-C-K-E-N. I think they ought to pay four times as much money for the Aloysius's, the Lickenbachers, don't you? Uh, E-R. Gee, I made it. <laughs> don't you ever get tired talking to yourself? Oh, I always talk to myself when I'm alone. And right now I'm alone. You may think you're here, but you're far from it. I bet right this minute you're cuddling in Jerry's arm, talking baby talk to him. Oh, will you please shut up? Oh, listen. 
Why don't you snap out of this, hon? It doesn't do you any good to go moping around. If you still love the fellow, why don't you go to him? What do you care what he said? Listen, if he'll take you, grab him while the grabbing's good. And then a little while, maybe you'll find out what a heel he's been and marry you anyway. And if he don't, what's the odds? You'll have a beautiful apartment, plenty of clothes, and a pot full of do re me. Can't you ever get it through your head, Dot, that I don't want his money? Is that all you ever think of? Most all. Well, it's disgusting. Oh, well, maybe it is disgusting. You'd get that way, too, if you'd have to keep writing Aloysius's luck and backers for a living. Hello, Dot. Hello. Hello, Cassie. Why, Gladys. Oh, gee, I'm glad to see you. When'd you get back? This morning. Had a swell time. Oh, I'm glad. Come on over and sit down. Sure. I thought you were going to stay at my place. Well, I was only... Well, see, it was sort of lonesome being up here all alone. And, well, I thought I'd be better off down here with Dot. Yeah, I suppose so. Have you seen Arthur yet? No, not yet. I phoned the office this morning, but he wasn't around. Gee, I can't wait till I see him. Have you seen Jerry yet? Why, why, yes. You have? Where? I just ran into him. Oh, I thought you weren't going to see him anymore. Well, I can't help it if I run into him, can I? Well, of course not, hon. But you can avoid it if you want to. I can't give him up, Gladys. I've been going around here this week crazy. Sometimes I think oh, I don't I know how you feel, darling. I've been in the same boat. But you've got to be strong. Oh. I wasn't, and look where I am. Where am I heading? Up a blind alley. Oh, Cassie... Don't get in my class. Why shouldn't she get in your class? What's wrong with your class? So you're a great one to be talking, and you living in the lap of luxury. Listen, Dot. I'd scrub floors if I could start all over again. Ah, oh, that's a lot of plain, ordinary hooey. And in the meantime, you're living on Park Avenue, have a car of your own, and you eat at the Ritz. Well, all I can say is you're having a swell time. Having a swell time, huh? Well, I'm glad you think so, Dot. Say, the trouble with you is you've forgotten how awful it is to live in a dump like this. You don't know what it means to have to cut down on your food so you can scrape together the rent, or else old horse face downstairs will throw you out on your whatses. Say, listen, did you ever have to eat liverwurst seven days a week because you couldn't afford anything else? Well, try it sometime. You'll be nuts about it. You've hung on to your self-respect, Dot. And that's important. Oh, what's your self-respect when you're hungry? It won't get you a porterhouse, will it? I used to feel that way, too. But believe me, I've learned plenty. And if Cassie deliberately walks into a spot like I'm in, she ought to have her head examined. Why, you put yourself at the mercy of the man every time. He can walk out on you whenever he pleases, and what can you do? Do you know what you become when you live the way I do? A panhandler. You have to bow and scrape and beg for everything you get. And that goes for love as well as money. Their wives get everything. A home, security, respect, everything. And what do you get? Nothing. Nothing but grief. When you love the man the way I do, Arthur Phelps, you wind up behind the eight ball every oh, time. Yes, just the same. If I was Cassie, I'd cop that guy before he gets away from And if her. she does, she'll never stop being sorry for Well, what of it? She'll have a good time while it lasts. Oh, will you two shut up? You act as if I were a slave or something to be sold down the river. I don't want to hear any more about it. Okay, okay. I'll go back to Lloyd's Luckenbacker. I'm sorry, hon, if I upset you. Oh, that's all right, Gladys. I'm, I'm just nervous. Well, I'll be running along now. Give me a ring in a couple of days. So long, Dot. Goodbye. Look me up sometime. I'll show you life among the rich and miserable. Says you. Goodbye, Cassie. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, hasn't that day the most marvelous line of talk? Boy, she's a panic to me. If you don't stop laughing, you're going to get hysterical. Oh, come on, hon. 
long as you've made up your mind, don't be so downhearted. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing, Doc. Ah, oh, nerds. If you think it's right, it's right. That's the only way to look at it. I suppose so. Does Jerry know you're coming? I sent him a note. Hello? Yeah. Just a minute. It's for you. Hello? Yeah. Sure, Gladys. Why, sure, I'll be right up. I've got to go right up to see Gladys. What's the matter? I've got my hat. Well, something must have happened, Doc. But well, what makes you think so? Oh, she sounded terrible. What'd she say? Well, it wasn't what she said. She just said, come on up, but it was the way she sounded when she said it. Here. Thanks. Listen, darling, I'll finish your packing. Thanks, dear. Come in. Good evening, Miss Kane. Mail this for me. Certainly. And here, Jimmy. This is for you. Thanks. Why, this is a $10 bill, Miss Kane. That's all right. I'm celebrating. Thanks, Miss Kane. Cassie. Well, what's happened? You look terrible. Nothing. I'm all right, hon. Sure. I'm all right. No. Did you see that? laugh, isn't it, Cassie? Had a note, telephone call, anything. Had to read it in the papers. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. It's like I told you, Cassie. Never get mixed up with a married man. You wind up behind the eight ball. Every time. Oh. Gladys! Gladys! What's the matter? Gladys! says she ought to be out by Thursday. That's swell. Helen, it's 
quite a vanilla and strawberry mix. All right, darling. Bromo Salsa, double dose. And make it snappy. <laughs> Somebody seems to be in a hurry. Probably needs it, too. I want a, I want a quart of, of chocolate. I mean, um, I want a quart of vanilla and strawberry mix. Just a minute, dear. When do I get my Bromo Seltzer? Jerry. Hello, darling. Well, you wouldn't make a liar out of a perfectly respectable newspaper, would you? Say, I want a quite of vanilla and strawberry mix. <laughs> All right, darling. I'll buy you four quarts. 